Hi, I'm Dr. Conrad, and I'm here today to talk to you about solving linear equations. And we're going to review some of this stuff. And for starting intermediate algebra, this is what you should have familiarity with right now. Here's a real easy linear equation that we're going to solve quickly. We just want to remind ourselves of what we're trying to do. Our goal is to try to find all the values of x, which I can substitute in here and get a true statement. Our strategy is going to be to try to isolate the x. And to do that, the tools that we're going to use will be tools of adding and subtracting or multiplying and dividing equal quantities to both sides of the equation. So here, this one's easy. We're going to first start out by subtracting 1 from each side of the equation. And so if I subtract 1 from the left side, I'm going to get 3x. And if I subtract 1 from the right side, I'm going to get 6. And now we're almost with an isolated x. All we have to do is divide both sides by 3. If I divide the left by 3, I just get x. If I divide the right by 3, I get 2. And there, I've got what I want, an isolated x. We can take the 2, substitute it back in here, and check that, in fact, it gives a true statement. Here's a much more complicated linear equation to solve. First, remember, I know it's linear because every time I see an x, the x appears only with power 1. There's no squares or cubes or other things involving the x. So this is going to be a linear equation, but much more complicated than the one before. First thing that makes this more complicated, of course, is, well, there's a lot more stuff. But that lot more stuff includes per parenthetical expressions. And so when we solve linear equations with parenthetical expressions, the first thing we want to do is we want to get rid of the parentheses. And we do this by using the distributive property. Or some people say we multiply things out. So if I start on the left-hand side, I will distribute the 4 over the x and the minus 2 and get 4x minus 8. The right's even worse because it's got two sets of parentheses. And we know when we deal with parentheses, we start with the innermost and work ourselves out. So here we've got 2 times 3x. That stays the same because now we're going to deal with the inner set of parentheses. So we distribute negative 2 times x. And negative 2 times plus 4 makes negative 8. Once we've done that, we're going to combine like terms to simplify our expressions. So here on the left side, we have a 3 and a negative 8. So that would combine to make 4x minus 5. The right inside our parentheses, we can combine like terms. 3x minus 2x makes 1x minus 8. It's getting simpler here, but we still have another set of parentheses. So we'll distribute there as well. Left stays the same, right will distribute, we get 2x minus 16. And now we're almost as easy as the one we started with. We're going to subtract 2x from both sides to get all the x's on one side of the equation. So this will, if we subtract 2x from the left, we'll get 2x minus 5. Of course, subtracting it from the right, it disappears. Now we'll add 5 to both sides so that only x is up here on the left. And so when I add 5 to the left, it goes away. I add 5 to the right, I get negative 11. And finally, we can isolate the x by dividing both sides by 2. And the 2 will go away from the left, and we'll now have negative 11 over 2 on the right. We've isolated our x. This should be a solution. We could go back and check and make sure that it works but I think we're OK. Here's another linear equation, but we've spruced it up a little bit. We've put in here some fractions. And fractions are things that cause problems for a lot of students and a lot of people who aren't students, too. Uh, so we look at this, and we have to make a decision. First, if you like fractions, and fractions don't bother you, you can treat this exactly the same way we just did uh, the other example. We can distribute, combine like terms, etc. Most people, however, don't like to deal with fractions. So if I have a linear equation with a fraction or multiple fractions in them, we can eliminate those fractions by multiplying both sides of the equation by the right number. And of course, the right number here is going to be the least common denominator of all the fractions that appear in the equation. On this particular equation, I have these two fractions. 
one half and two thirds, the least common denominator is six. So what I'm gonna do is multiply both sides of this equation by six. Now on the left side, we have an addition, so we need to distribute. So I'll have six times two thirds times x minus three plus six times four, which I know that's 24, but we'll get back to it. This side, well, I'm just gonna have six times a half, and I'll just hold off multiplying for a second. Now I'll do all my multiplication. So I have six times two thirds times x minus three. Well, I can simplify this before I multiply because three goes into three once and three goes into six twice. So this is really just four times x minus three. Six times four, of course, is 24. Over here, two goes into two once and two goes into six three times. So this is just three times two x plus seven. So look what we have. We now have a new equation, no more fractions. We can continue just like we did before. So we'll distribute. That's gonna give us four x minus 12 plus 24 equals six x plus 21. We have some like terms over here that we can combine. So we get four x plus 12 equals six x plus 21. Now we can subtract 4x from both sides to get all the x's on one side. So there will be no x's here and we'll have 2x plus 21 on the right. Subtract 21 from both sides and we're gonna get 12 minus 21, that's minus, so negative nine equals 2x. And finally, we can isolate the x by dividing both sides by two. So we get x equals negative nine over two. Here's an example of a linear equation which contains two variables, x and y. It's still linear. We're supposed to solve for y. And when I look at this, I, I'm tempted to get confused, but I do exactly the same steps as I did before, except this time, it's not the x that I'm trying to isolate, it's the y that I'm trying to isolate. So to isolate the y, it means I'm gonna get everything on the other side and get y by itself. So here, what I would have to do, of course, is I'm gonna subtract three x from both sides. So I will have two y equals negative three x plus four. And you've noticed I wrote the x first, even though there's a minus, and you might notice or recognize why I'm doing this. Because now I'm gonna divide both sides by two to isolate the y, so I'm gonna divide that by two. On the other side, I need to, in theory at least, think about dividing everything by two. But I know that when I have a fraction with an addition or subtraction on the top, I can split it into two pieces. which we can simplify like this. And what we have now is y isolated. You may remember something like this from studying straight lines. And in intermediate algebra, you'll go back and do some more of this. As a final comment, I'd just like to say that if what I've done here has been something that has looked totally foreign to you, you have no idea what I'm talking about, then I would suggest that intermediate algebra is not the course for you at this time. Perhaps you want to look into elementary algebra. If you want to see how well you remember this, there are a set of exercises available at the link directly below my box here. Thank you and good luck.